of all, Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Salaya, Deputy Programme Manager, USSF University Consortium with the United States Department of the Air Force. Also joining us, Alex Gilbo, Head of AI at TELUS, and Rajat Alawala, Vice President Engineering at Capgemini. Hello to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. <clears throat> Great to be here. Yeah, you're very, very welcome indeed. It's been a packed show already, and we have an awful lot to fit into the next 40 minutes or so. So let's uh, let's get to it. The future of Gen AI is a hugely exciting topic, and I don't think we're going to be short of things to discuss. So where I want to start is, well, less the future, more where we are now. So I guess that gives us a foundation for the rest of the, the conversation, really. So for all of you, what are the most promising current applications for Gen AI? And which industries do you feel are benefiting most from those uh, technologies? Uh, Aaron, you are first on my list, so I'll, I'll start with you. Where do you feel we are at the moment with it? Yeah, happy to lead off. And first of all, thanks for having me. Um, really happy to be here with uh, uh, Technology Magazine again. Um, and uh, I am here in my own civilian capacity, so my uh, comments do not reflect the, uh, U the um, US government. Uh, but uh, to that end, in my opinion, the most promising are not necessarily the most prolific. And so let me explain. Um, so as a, a metacognitive scientist, I believe that the capabilities that integrate seamlessly with human decision cycles and current processes are going to be the most useful and therefore the most used. Um, and so as humans continue to become more familiar with them, um, they will be able to have increased confidence and, uh, and a metacognitive awareness of their own processes and also of the machine's capabilities too. Thank you, Aaron. Alex, if I can come to you next. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I would say across all the industries, the main application right now is to use generative AI as an expert advisor. Um, so it's really good to uh, help out, uh, second guess some opinions that people are having about their work, uh, research with the current documentation that companies have access to, um, and are used to really answer questions and, and help people do their actual work. So it can create a lot of efficiencies for coders but to review their code or accelerate the way they code. It can help uh, people that need access to some specific information, for example, call centers or technical uh, knowledge that needs to be complemented with documentation. So it can really accelerate and reduce costs of, of a lot of work. So um, to summarize, really today, I think the main application would be uh, using AI as expert advisor. And in terms of which industry could leverage that, well, I would say any industry really that have uh, their process documented. So as long as uh, information is available, then can be digested by the AI and help accelerate uh, the processes across uh, the company. Absolutely. And Prajat, if we come to you last on this one, well, where do you feel we are at the moment, the current situation? Thank you. So I think I represent the network side of things, mobile network side of things. So I think most probably uh, most important application would be towards autonomous networks. Uh, I think uh, using all kinds of uh, use cases like uh, expert advisor, as uh, I think uh, someone said, and um, using anomaly detection and fixing. So basically, autonomous network where it can self-heal if there's an issue in the network, if there's a problem in the network, uh, it identifies the problem and then corrects the problem, and and there would be a human loop uh, for approval, uh, you know, in case of correction, so that it does not sort of bring something down. So autonomous network and multi-agentic systems are the key things to look out for in uh, generative AI domain, where one agent is pr pr generating some text. And by the way, all this will be multimodal, not just the text. It will be text, uh, vision modeling, LVM, or uh, audio. So multi-agentic system will be working in tandem. One, one agent is generating something, and another agent is checking the output of another you know, generative engine so that the output is correct. So autonomous network and multi-agentic systems are the way to go. <clears throat> Thank you. I think we're just having a little bit of trouble with your uh, visuals coming back to us. You seem to have frozen, uh, Raja. Hopefully that will correct itself in just a moment. Uh, but in the meantime, okay. we will. Uh, we, we can still hear you loud and clear. So that's half the battle. We'll we'll continue. Um, what I'd like to look at now, though, is is the sort of the near future. The pace of change has been extraordinary, which is something that we've already discussed on the on the show today. So let's look in the the relatively near future over the next five years or so. 
it's, it's a near impossible question given the pace of change, but how do you all foresee things changing in those next five years, the relatively near future? Um, Alex, if we can start with uh, you on this one. Yeah, of course. Um, five years is a really, really long time in AI. Uh, even like predicting it two years from now is, is tough. Uh, so, so maybe I'll, I'll explain what are what I think are the next steps. Uh, so as I mentioned before, uh, today AI is being used as an expert advisor. So you have to proactively ask questions to it. Uh, it will find information for you uh, out of the repository uh, that, that you have access to, all of this current knowledge. Um, but I think the next step is actually um, uh, being branded as agentic AI is moving from AI expert advisor to AI peers. Uh, so today, AI, if you ask it to uh, revise your, your talking notes or revise uh, the way you're writing an email, like it can really help you. But eventually, you would like the AI to actually do some work for you. Um, to give a quick example, uh, coders today, uh, they can write code and ask AI to complement some specific functions um, and then revise and stay uh, keep the human in the loop and, and accept or not the code. Uh, eventually, where this is moving, and we're, we're seeing already some discoveries there and some, some tools out there to do it, um, is moving to actually asking the what you want the software to do and just let the AI figure out how to get there. Um, <laughs> Another example is, for example, for, for again, the call centers. Uh, today, you could call uh, an AI agent that would answer questions about uh, available plans or what, what's available in your current account. Uh, it can answer those questions, identify you and such. But eventually, you would like to have an uh, agent that are actually able to make changes in your current account. So you could add products, services. Um, so it, it's actually giving arms and legs to the AI algorithm so that they can be your peers and not just uh, advisor uh, on the side of your work. And Aaron, if we can come to you next, please. Absolutely. So lots of thoughts on this. Uh, love, I, and I love what Alex was saying, uh, especially about the human uh, machine teams. That is a big part of the future, uh, in my opinion. Um, in addition, one of the, of the directions that I think that it's going to go is uh, specificity. So uh, more directly, um, a lot of these generative um, solutions are general in nature. And the more task uh, specific domain that emerges, we'll be able to have more refined applicability of that capability for the human machine team. And so we'll see more depth. I don't know if we'll see more breadth of uh, capabilities, but certainly more depth. And as that occurs, those human machine teams that Alex was just rightly talking about will be at the forefront of the next step, which is then developing the human workforce to uh, meet that emerging trend. Thank you. Uh, Rajab, we can come to you. I think we've got your video stream back properly. Yes, we do. Excellent news. If I can pass on to you for the next uh, five years, your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think uh, next time, I think I just talked about multi-agentic systems, uh, autonomous uh, ways of working, whether it's network or any other software development. I think I, I see a lot of vision modeling uh, coming into play, uh, whether it's network identifying, uh, you know, alarms. Uh, in, in medical field, a lot of vision modeling to take uh, care of a lot of, uh, uh, you know, care and a lot of uh, disease identification and, and, and the further steps. Uh, in terms of uh, autonomous network, as I earlier talked about, you know, more advancement uh, where you you are able to pre uh, uh, sort of detect the problem before they occur, and then you apply the fixes to solve them before even the problem is realized. So basically, you are able to predict where are the things going. To, much more better prediction, and I think finally, more and more devices will have AI built in, right from your car to your phone. I think Apple has already come out with a phone with the AI, but any devices that you can think of, whether it's television at your home or, or your car or your any any specific uh, uh, device, your home meters will have AI built into them in, within within the chips. So AI are being, as we speak, are being built into the integrated uh, chips where they are uh, uh, they provide a lot of uh, uh, additional functionality to the normal uh, behavior. And we see, we see that is happening. I think one of the key advancements would be much more. Uh, you know, uh, faster uh, LLM or LVM um, and which take very less processing time, less GPU so that they can be deployed in a shorter uh, area where you have lesser memory constraints. So, you know, 
so in terms of reduced size of uh, the the uh, the large language models and the LVM also is, is something that will happen very soon. One Thank thing you. I will also oh, do continue. Sorry, I thought I was interrupted there. Sorry, I'll move on to the next uh, question I wanted to go to. And as you were saying there, um, Rajat, about the proliferation of, of Gen AI and different consumer products or chips or uh, applications, the question of ethics really comes to the forefront again. The more it's used, the smarter it gets, the greater number of applications, I feel the greater the um, consideration for ethics needs to come into play. Few, what are the key considerations with the more Gen AI is used and the better and more powerful it gets, the strength of focus on ethics needs to be? Absolutely. I think this is one of the key topic which has been, I think even in Europe, we are in the process of writing those uh, standards and regulations and the, the, it is paramount uh, it is of paramount importance to have those ethics defined for different areas uh, so that uh, you know it the misuse of uh, 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 genetic AI capability can be avoided. Uh, it, it is important for us to understand that these are there to help us not to, you know, uh, not to be used against an, any uh, any aspect of, uh, of life. So ethics is something that needs a lot of uh, uh, delving into there's a lot of uh, uh, regulation are being prepared and i hope those those regulation cover all aspects including devices networks uh, and, and, and agents even agents because 